So last time we were speaking about Sri Guru Chala Napatma. And that does Babaji explain that the lotus feet of Sri Guru and the treasure house of Bhakti are the root cause of all our endeavors in Bhajan and Sada. And then Kevala Bhakti Sadma. It's the only way how to attain pure devotion. Thank you, Gaura. And now, Bando Mui Savadana Mati. So this Kemala Bhakti, this one pointed Bhakti, we can get this from Shri Guru because he is engaged in this Kemala Bhakti. And um, Ananda Das Babaji is very nicely explaining that Sri Guru of Sri Guru Charan, the lotus feet of the spiritual master, is a very nice combination of Godhead and devotee. And I like this meditation because. We can feel that Sri Guru is a part of the divine. We first see him as a representative of Nitai, and later, by the mercy of Nityananda, of Ananda Mandri, we can feel and see her, our Guru Manjari, and by her mercy. She will reveal to us what is important for our eternal services. So, Sri Guru is the vessel of pure devotion, both in practice and in perfect loving devotion. Practice means in sadhana bhakti, he is giving example. He is also in the Sadaka Deha. He is also in a human form. And also, he is showing us the way to go in our spiritual form, in our soul bodies, in our Svaru. Not only showing the way like a navigator, but also giving the feelings. And that is like a wonderful combination. It's the best combination that can happen to any soul that is traveling here on this planet. Why? Because it is so, it is perfect, you know? Nobody could, could have a better idea than Sri Radha Mohan and Gauranga Mahaprabhu to send their devotees here who are with one leg here and also with the other leg they are in the spiritual world. And they're showing us the way how to also, because now we are here with two legs, but we also want to go that step to the spiritual world. And not only that, that they are showing, that Sri Guru is showing this, Sri Guru, is also living there. He is, or she is living here and she, she is living there and is receiving through Charan, through the lotus feet, our services, our endeavors, our service, and also transform the service to the lotus feet of Radhamu. Isn't that a wonderful living entity? Isn't that a wonderful gift of the divine? A love that is... It's all souls are yearning for this love. 
we are yearning for the love of our mother and father in the beginning. And yes, we are so lucky they love us unconditionally according to their best abilities. But Sri Guru is even more than just a mother and a father. He can be a friend. He can be a, like a lover. He can be so close and so dear. He will take any form and any feelings in exchange that any living being wants to have and wants to feel. And by this service, Sri Guru is transforming our bhakti, our love, into the realm of Shuddha Sattva. You know, Gurudev always gives this easy comparisons. He says, one who is connected can connect. One who is in contact with the powerhouse, with the electricity of love, they can also give this connection. Not only connect us by mantra, that is also important and that is also beautiful, but there are higher levels of connection when we come deeper into realizations of the mantra and of our relationship with Radha Mohan. And therefore, we need this connection in our spiritual life. Because by the grace of the lotus feet of Sri Guru, all our illusions or blockages are easily taken away. It takes some time. It will take some patience. But it will happen. And sometimes in the Zoom classes also, Gurudev says, they are hiding from me. <laughs> or about the devotees or about myself. Are you hiding? Like Nityananda. No, when Raghunath Das was coming to this festival, he is hiding. Why are we hiding? Usually because we feel maybe very unqualified or we feel bad about ourselves because we, we identify very much with our bad habits or we feel too humble, too shy. But actually, to, to get this connection work more quickly and more deeply, it is important to come close. Like we have to put in the plug if we want to connect to the electricity, right? We know that there's a plug, but we have to put our we have to put our electricity or our plug into that plug, and then it will be like the stream that will work, the stream of the flow of the love. So first, Gurudev appears uh, in this regard to guide us, to encourage us, and to always help us to get rid of our vices. Like Balaram, he has the plow. So with this plow of love, that sometimes also means we have to rock, get rid of the big rocks. <laughs> they are sometimes a little bit stuck in our consciousness, in our karmic situation. But Gurudev takes this plow of love with the mercy of Nityananda, of Balaram, and is preparing the field, the field of fractuation, where the seeds that come from the heart of Shri Guru, the heart of Shri Guru Manjari, the service seeds, they get, you know, when they have to be in a nice 
environment of soft earth. We all have maybe experienced the garden. And now here in Germany, it's the main time for gardening. When we have a seed, the seed needs this very soft earth and it should be a little warm. And the you know, when the climate is warm and the seed needs to put in this warm, moist, soft earth. So Shikuru is helping with this. She plowing inside and outside what is not so favorable. So the plant of devotion, my desire to serve Srimati Radhika can grow. So this you all have heard. And I have one realization when I was meditating on Nittai, how Gurudev is being the mercy vessel that is actually is always connected to Srimati Radhika. Guru Tattva is Srimati Radhika's mercy. Why? Because Nityananda is Ananga Mandra. But this, this relationship will change or become conscious. Let's say like that, the depth of our relationship will become more conscious when the field of the chitta, our heart, our mind, our everything, is soft and moist and receptive. So then the seeds that have maybe also been there already, they will sprout. But before, when the consciousness is not prepared, the sprouting takes some time. But the seeds are there. And these seeds are the mercy seeds of the sadhu, of the Vaishnavas, of our also own desires. This combination of these beautiful, beautiful flowers of love that want to sprout. And they will sprout, but the conditions have to be a little bit favorable. And the field has to be softened. And the rocks have to go out. And therefore, Sri Guru is giving this, this Kevala Bhakati, this one-pointed love. This one-pointed love will grow slowly. For some, maybe they have seeds already in preparations from past lives. They have some uh, some skadas from past life relationship with Sri Guru. For them, it goes very fast. And for like people like me, it takes a longer time because I'm so foolish and so blocked that could have said once to me, "So Nidhi, now you are coming ten years here to me and listening. And what is the what is the fruit? <laughs> Are you not going to do something with this? <laughs> oh, and then I realized mm, I am just enjoying good Oh, what? Do I also want to serve? Or do I really want to surrender? Or I'm just enjoying the love that is emanating from his lotus feet. So this is different, different positions according to our realizations of the relationship with Sri Guru. And also this Bandhu Mui Savadana means the practitioner should carefully render service. Carefully means 
that when the winds are coming, the, uh, you know, some obstacles, and they have many, many, many forms, these obstacles. They depend also on our own life, on our own uh, circumstances. Sometimes the winds, they are also like, you know, climbing on the Bhakti Lata beach. They are not just like hindering maybe, they are climbing. And Ananda, as Babaji says, that, that even if somebody wants to practice Bhakti and especially this very uh, powerful Bhakti of devotion to Srimati Radhika, then even the demigods, when they see that, they, they kind of like think, oh, wow, this person will be more powerful than me. Oh, I cannot, I cannot tolerate this. Let's throw some obstacles. Let's put some tests. Or even in our, you know, devotees, we sometimes have fights or misunderstanding and this talk and that talk and you know, deviations are easy always to be stopped by. In my case, Guru said to me, you have so many nice and elevated brothers and they always try to stop you from being one-pointed. <laughs> oh my God. I, I could not realize it at the beginning. But after some time, it took me some time because I am, um, of course, I'm attached to the beautiful devotees that I know from 20, 30 years in Bhakti. But today when I was in the garden, I realized, yeah, these are the, you know, very dangerous uh, things for our Bhakti. When they grow, like some, some um, of these uh, plants, they are like winding around the main plant that you want to grow. Like they are like they are like a snake, you know. You don't see them at the beginning. But then after some time, they come up and they can like kind of strangle the bhakti even, the bhakti lata. So sometimes as a gardener, you have to take out by the roots. And that is not always to be seen in the beginning, the roots of the weeds. But Shiguru has the vision and he helps us to get the roots, to come to the root of our blockages. And that sometimes is a little bit painful for the false ego. Because why should my dear devotee friends um, you know, there are no blockages in my life. But Shiguru sees deeper than us. And they they see what is the, you know, where these weeds are growing around our desire to really go into the service of Srimati Radhika. So Shiguru is really uh, empowered to see all of our obstacles, but we also have to come forward. That's important, even though sometimes we get slapped and sometimes we feel like shaking and the false ego is screaming, no, <laughs> I will get slapped again. I will get, I will lose something before false ego always is afraid to get lost, to, to dissolve. But it is necessary. Shiguru is perfectly empowered by Nityananda, by Ananda Mandri, by Shimati Radhika, to give the guidance to every soul that is coming and go through all the different um, graduations of our bhakti. That I can say from the bottom of my heart. And then this service, when the weeds are somehow not so, you know, overwhelming the Bhakti Lata beach, and then, then come some flowers, 
and they, these flowers Gurudev can offer and say to Radharani, now this servant, I want to offer them this mantra. And it's going like step by step by step and more and more. Gurudev is accepting our services. First, maybe we only want to sit and listen and become purified. And then later, we can also become more useful. <laughs> we will also do any kind of service that Shri Guru wants us to do. And not only that what I would like to do. Because that may be a big, big, big difference. We can do many nice services. We can cook, we can clean, we can um, read, we can chant. These are all basic, like, everyday services that we want to do with love and devotion. And Shiguru is very happy. But, my dear friends, my experience is like this. Often there comes a time where Shiguru will ask us to do something that you really don't want to do. <laughs> oh, that is painful for the false ego. And I will tell, good, if I will do anything for you, but just don't ask me this. <laughs> but no, no, no. This is what Shiguru is her choice. It's not my, you know, it's not my, my, uh, I am not a very good uh, disciple. If I just want to do for my Guru Dev, my Guru Devi, what I would like to do. That is a very beginning stage. Later on, when there comes like this Vishram Bar, Vishram Bena Guru Seva, a more intimate relationship, then it will be another manifestation. It will come down from the spiritual world. Like when uh, our Sanatan Goswami, he was so much in suffering. Somehow he had this disease when he came to Jagannath Puri. And it was full of, you know, this disease was kind of like an infection all over his body. And he felt very humble and disgusted with his own body. He didn't want to go in front of Mahaprabhu like this. So, in his mind, he was so, you know, he felt this kind of disease is probably, it's like, it will take my life. It will rotten. My whole body will rotten. And I will rather than bothering Mahaprabhu, bothering my Chaitanya with this, you know, diseased body. I will just give up this body and and when Lord Jagannath comes out, I will jump underneath the wheel of Lord Jagannath. But Mahaprabhu, he knew this. Because he can feel all of his devotees, and especially Shimate Radhika, she can feel all of her mandaris. It's not only that the mandaris can feel Shimate Radhika, it's also that Shimate Radhika can feel them. So Chaitanya came and he said to Sanatha, What do you want to do? Your body is mine. You cannot decide just to give up your body. Your body is so important to me. I want to make you an instrument of my love. And you have to do many, many important things. It's already planned. I have already, my desires are already fixed. So come here. I will give you a big embrace because you are mine. And then Sanatana Goswami was healed. So 
sometimes we also think that my consciousness is so dirty, my thoughts are so black, I'm full of negativity, I'm full of uh, any bad habits or dark feelings that I don't want to go in front of my God if like this. I feel that it's like a dirty um, thing to present. Why should I? I can better hide. But Sri Guru is not seeing outside, not seeing external. She can see the soul and her mandari. She wants to make us hers. And she says, come here. I hug you. I can heal you from all your diseases of a false ego, of fear, and I will give you everything because you are my servant and I have some ideas, some plans. So please, everyone, if you have any doubts about yourself because you think you are not so great or not so pure. Don't be afraid. Shiguru loves you unconditionally and waiting for the moment that we will come and, you know, be ready for the service that Shiguru wants to do through us. Like I love yesterday, so always and Guru is giving some praise, but God Amani, he is very clever, he always, and has realized it, um, you are speaking through me, Guru, it's not me, it's you, like Ramananda Roy said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are making me speak these things, it's not that I feel I am speaking to you, who do you think I am, I am not you know, it's it's inappropriate that I try to speak to you, but you are the rain and or you are the ocean. And with the sun of your love, this ocean is giving me the cloud, some drops of mercy and this clouds. And this what you would like to give, but what you would like to give to the world, to the devotees is coming down in form of the rain of your mercy. So I am just the instrument. So and with this kind of, like we have to be naked, right? We have to be naked in front of Sri Guru. And that is sometimes very painful because we are also ashamed. But then Raga Bhakti, Gurudev always says, we have to give up all our shame and all our fears and all the religious um, inclinations, what we think that everybody thinks and what my sisters and brothers think and what my, my other god brothers and god sisters think. We have to be very one-pointed if we want to reach the goal. And in the end, it's only us who can be responsible for our uh, activities in this life. No one will be there to, you know, to reap the results, but only myself. I have to be um, ready to walk my path. And Sri Guru is just waiting for this moment of this one-pointed uh, love and action and meditation and slowly, slowly guiding us according to our desire, because the free will is the highest principle, especially in love. Sri Guru will not say, you have to love me. Sri mm -hmm. Radhika and Mohan also don't say this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also don't say this. We have decided to go for this path because it's so attractive to be in a loving relationship without fear, without any 
you know, where every step is a dance and where every song is a, where every word is a song. We want to be part of this loving spiritual family. We want to be a Brajbasi. We want to be natural in our bhakti. We just want to follow because of some desire to be good or to do good. No, I want to really feel my relationship with my Shimati Radhika. And so I start with my relationship to my Guru Manjari and also all my sisters around and it will go deeper and deeper until it becomes Kevala Bhakti, pure, one-pointed devotion and practice. And then it becomes never dry. It's always juicy. It's always rasa. And uh, Gurudev likes to eat. Yes, you all know. He has always these delicious, beautiful prashant of Radha Mahan. All the devotees in this Ongemandi who love him so much, they are cooking for him. Like uh, Gopika and Rasalina and Ridula and our Niti and all of so we have so excellent cooks and then you think he's just eating he is enjoying the rasa the taste of their love so we also want to be part of this um, loving service that that Gurdiv also can enjoy the rasa of our service, and what he does with it is he is bringing it to Srimati Radhika's lotus feet. And that is our perfection. Huh? When this connection comes in, then Gurudev is ready to give us everything. And we are also ready to give everything. We give up our fears, we give up our shame, and even the false ego, it will also go. What is there to lose? And then comes the next point about the Spandumui Savadana. It's so beautiful. Yeah, then um, also it is here said we follow some rules. We bring here it's the uh, Anantaras Babaji and Vishwana Chakavati Thakur's uh, commentary on this verse, on this song, is that we are washing feet, massaging feet, bathing, anointing with sandal pulp, wash the clothes, and always be in a very good mood, and always be positive. And if there's something that is on our mind, then also Gurudev will feel it and, and we will talk about it. And uh, so many nice services we can do. And we get some Mahaprasadam and uh, we can, you know, clean the plate and uh, so many nice services. And we do this with very much love and care. That is Bando Mui Savadana. And also one point is important that always we should have a positive attitude of, of consciousness that what is really going on. And then also we travel from the <clears throat> from the seeing Gurudev and the Vaidhi Bhakti as a sadhana, as a sadhaka, we travel deeper into seeing Gurudev as Srimati Radhika's Dasi, and also she is connecting us to Srimati Radhika's service. So these are the developments that are happening in this wonderful relationship. And like any relationship, this is also not always sunshine that comes the rain, but also the rain is important. The rain of my tears the reign of mercy, 
the rain will make new things sprout. Like you know, in the garden, when it's too dry, then nothing will grow. And sometimes it is so dry in my heart that I think nothing will grow there anymore. I'm done. For this lifetime, my bhakti is done. That can happen sometimes. But then comes the next strain. The rain of my tears or the rain of mercy from the Vaishnavas, from so many possible sources that can be rain from so many possibilities how the rain of mercy can come by crying out of desperation. Also, this will give some new seeds of love, the hope to sprout in my And then all of a sudden, when you see this, the seeds are sprouting, then you think, oh, I thought my garden was so dry and nothing will grow. But no, it is not true. There's still something. Shrimati Radhika has sent some drops of mercy through her dasis. And now by their mercy, by their association, some, some seeds are sprouting. I didn't even know there were some. I thought I was so dry like a stone. I thought my heart had become so hard. But no, no. Some more will grow, and it will grow better and higher than before. So here, Shila Vishwana Chakravati Tap. No, this is actually now uh, Ananda Das Babaji is giving one uh, quote of uh, Jiva Goswami from Bhakti Sandhava. And it says that the only cause of destruction of vices that are hard to conquer by the student's own endeavors and of the Lord's satisfaction is the grace of Sri Guru. So that is a very important point. The only cause of destruction of biases that are hard to conquer by one's own endeavors. You know, in life there's always this karmic things that are bounding, binding in different, different varieties. Like we want to go deep in my bhakti, but some, somehow there's always some obstacle or some misunderstanding or I become uh, tamasic. And these obstacles, these I cannot overcome. Why? Because I'm so much uh, struggling with these old uh, identifications and old um, bindings that I have not the power. And that's why we need the mercy of Sri Guru. Sri Guru is like Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, Yasya Prashada Bhagavad Prashada. So much mercy is flowing from Sri Guru, even more than sometimes from Srimati Radhika or from Sri Krishna. Why? Because Sri Guru is like our mother. She feels so much love for us, more than we could ever imagine, that we have not felt before, that love that we really desire, that we hope to also become more and more connected to, and also we want to express love ourselves, but due to some obstacles of very many past lifetimes or many uh, old patterns in the mind, Sri Guru is helping and we have to come in front of Sri Guru. We have to be fearless of any ego and then Sri Guru will lift us up because Shri Mati Radhika, she wants us to be 
her dasis. She is waiting for us. And so she gives all the love to Shiguru. And Shiguru is channeling this love. And then our heart and our consciousness, which was before blocked by some certain things, it can flow again. It's like a channel. Shiguru is a channel. And also, Shiguru wants that we become channels of love. It's an ongoing process of Guru Parampara. So when the, the pipe is not clean, we need to be cleaned. And that cleaning process sometimes is a little bit, you know, taking some energy. But when the pipe is clean again and the flow of love and devotion can go smooth again, then it was all for the betterment. And sometimes I'm afraid that my blockages are too big, but no. What did Srila Narayan Maharaj say? In many of his classes on Govardhan, when we did the Parikram, he would say, yes, maybe you are not qualified. But I am qualified. So we don't have to be fearful. Yes, we are not qualified, but like Gurdiv always says, this is our qualification mm -hmm. that we know that we are not qualified. And like this, we can become puppets of, of their love, of their vision, of their desires, which which are more more and more, far more than we can ever uh, perceive. We have to just become the puppets and, you know, become a little bit uh, more flexible than what the mind and the senses and the ego sometimes tell us. And therefore, we need the help of our friends. We have friends and they, they help us, our devoted brothers and sisters. And they are also pushing, we are pushing each other to the front of the lotus feet of Shikuru and Shimati Radhika and all our Vaishnavas and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all. All will be fine in the end. You will see. We will feel, we feel it always again and again. By the rain of mercy, it all happens that the seeds sprout and the love is growing. Even sometimes we think there's like a stoppage of growth, but it's only for a certain time. Ah, and then there's our dear Dayanidhi, Radhe. You had this uh, question, right? I saw this morning you were uh, asking uh, about Shilana uh, Reinmarch understanding of Arjan and Bhajan, right? Are you there? Yes. Say yes. something. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Tell me, my dear. Radhe. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, um, I send you also this video. Yes. Brief video that you can understand the context. I, I looked at the video. It is very nice. Mm -hmm. Very short, but so much nice things. Huh? Mm, actually, yes, uh, and, yeah. yeah. No, no. No, you no, actually, uh, I personally, I didn't have this so much bound uh, with God Brothers of Naira Maharaj. And it, somehow or another, I see that it also was my fortune. Because I, yeah. I, I, saw he, I saw him just in the end. So that not, not was enough time to be bound also by God Brothers. So it, it was like a perfect job of the gardener just to put the seed and, <laughs> and to, be, to make everything clean around. And after that, Guru Dev and you and Paul. Yeah. So it's perfect like that. Just. But because of that, I, have, uh, I, I would like to understand some things. I think that uh, there are also need also for our devotees. So uh, I don't know if you want to say something about that. About the Sajana and Bhajan? Or which, uh, about, uh, about the goal of Sadhana and the goal of Bhajana. And he, he make distingu dist uh, distinguish between these two 
uh, word. So what is his understanding of that? How you understand that he uh, understand? Yeah, I... Um... When sadhana transform in bhajan, what is mm -hmm. the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is actually one very nice quote that I, I forgot the book now, but I... Uh, do you know this little book booklet that I uh, printed in Vrindavan that about uh, the inspiration for spontaneous devotion? It's a small booklet, very small. It has Radha Mohan on the top. And there is one very nice article about exactly this point. I can also send it to you. Um, and there, Shlana Imaj says that uh, the, the growing of our consciousness from archana means worship to you know bhajan means also worship is the is the growing of our relationship to freedom relationship means of course uh, that i have to understand what is my service and how do i practice my service because often we are doing and we are doing like the offering of the deepa of the incense and we are doing everything with our sadaka deha no? with our with our human body we do uh, we give boga we do all these things but when we enter into raga nuga bhakti we are by the mercy of our gurudev instructed to go more deeper into smada and bath with bath shana i much always used to say that sadam this the goal of sadam is bath and then the goal of bath is to go into prema so that is actually the step to go from external service more oriented on on rules and regulations and structures that we have learned in the temple uh, that we have seen and that we have uh, also you know, done it to go more into internal service with the feelings that the Brajbasis have the feelings of service to into the Leelas to enter into that love that is fluctuating between Sri Radha and Mohan and, and serve this love. And for that, we need the feelings of someone who is already in that mood. And in this video also, Sri Narayan Maharaj is explaining this. It will guide us slowly into Vrindavan. So the external uh, things that we do in our, in our sadhana, and the internal things is another story. And it will change through Smaran and Dhyan and Dhruvanu Smriti and Samadhi. We go uh, through different, different stages in our uh, ability to remember the Leela, the pastimes with feelings. It's, of course, we can say, it's a mercy for Gurudev. We are endeavoring, and Gurudev is like, kind of like accepting and preparing that the pipeline of our service will go directly to uh, the service of Srimati Radhika. That is one point. And another point that our Gurudev is always given is that we are practicing Bhajana Kriya. So this Bhajana Kriya is what Gurudev always calls love in action. We are doing all services that we do with the consciousness that I am a Dasi of Shimati Radhika. And then in this consciousness, we connect always in remembrance of my relationship. And slowly, slowly by this habit, let's say it's a habit of an internal attitude, 
internal connection. Like when I cook, uh, I remember last time in one Zoom, good if I said, good if I was cooking. Yes, you were cooking for Shimati Radhika. So always connecting not only with external things, but with our real position as a Darcy. And that will become more and more clear to us when we are growing into our style path, that fixed position uh, that everything we do, whether it be externally or internally, it will be for the service of Shri Mantiralika, for the service of Shri Guru Dev, Shri Guru Majari. So that is a, a kind of a purification that takes place by love and action. So there are these, you know, these techni technical kind of uh, observations, but I like this practical, simple approach because I remember at that time in the association uh, with Narayan Maharaj, many devotees were practicing uh, mantra, uh, mantra mai asana, this kind of smaran where you sit down and you chant and you meditate about one verse, right? And then you try to go into the lila. For me, it was very uh, artificial because I didn't feel so much of this verse. Maybe to learn a verse is a good thing, but to feel and to have a new perspective. And that is what I got from, you know, from Gurudev now, that uh, it's not so much about the verses, or learning ability, or, you know, studying. It's more to go into the deeper relationship by the mercy of someone who is connected in this relationship and in these feelings. And as we know, Shimati Radhika is the, you know, Bhava Mai, Mahabhav personified, and all her devotees, all of her dasis, they are also most emotional. So I love to be in this uh, sangha of our all emotional devotees. <laughs> and it becomes more easy for me like this, to enter um, into the feelings. And these feelings, I have this experience in my life. Um, feelings have the most power to transform my consciousness. Knowledge is not so strong, but feelings are more strong. Like when we know that Krishna is the supreme, then yeah, because I know this, then I, I like to be a devotee. But to feel the love of the Brajbasis, whether it be Mother Yashoda, or the, the, the Saka, to feel this, to come closer. And then, of course, to Shemati Radhika, who is our Ishta Devi. My God, this is an ocean of emotion. And, uh, yeah, the emotion, we were <laughs> meditating on this, the emotion. It's like emotion that comes from the emotions. So I find it for my bhakti, I find it much more helpful to, to get um, instructed how to feel, like Gurudev is giving us now, than to get instructed how to learn verses, achayas, books. That also I like, but when I feel the, you know, feel it more, then it comes automatically. It's more like, for me, it's an, it's the approach that is natural. And I would like to send you this uh, paragraph where he was um, explaining, but it's still like entering in Dragon Bhakti. No, it is always a hint. Shinarai Maharaj always give this hint how to enter. But like uh, Jainanda Maharaj often say, says that the missing point that I also didn't get from him is how to feel the baths and how to be connected with the feelings every day and night, 24-7. And that is what I love so much now. I have this uh, 
guidelines. And now my Raga Nuga Bhakti, I mean, I have no realizations. I cannot say that it's, it would sound uh, strange, but uh, I can say that uh, I feel I'm, I'm connected through Gurdiv and that uh, something is, uh, my heart is moving. I'm moving. I feel I'm moving in the right direction and I'm praying and I and I'm happy that I don't have to prove myself to be learned anymore to to enter into love and the social So Suniti we can say that uh, sadhana is uh, when you don't put your feeling and your identification like Anjari, for example, when they are missing, there is sadhana. When you put inside your feeling and but your identity, like the regulated, uh, the, mm, mm, you do something that is regulated by your daily activities, but maybe not uh, out of feeling, out of duty, you know, duty bound services. And uh, within sadhana, you are developing to go into deeper aspects of sadhana. For example, smara. To remember, like when I listen to one class, I remember what did Guru say, what feelings were coming, how to go deeper with this point. And then the uh, smaran is coming to Lilia Smaran. And after this experience, I can only say, you know, before I thought that uh, I have to, of course, I was more remembering uh, Krishna's Lila in the beginning. And now, all these Lilas I learned to see by mercy of Guru from the perspective of Srimadhi Radhika. Not only from the perspective of any like historian or learning student. Oh yeah, Krishna has lived then and then he is dead and then he was born in Mathura, but actually he's a British Parsi. I have this knowledge good as when knowledge starts, knowledge ends. And I feel that is uh, the the meaning of, of entering from sadhana bhakti to the Vaidhi bhakti sadhana into ragana, raganuga sadhana. Raganuga sadhana is also, you know, a sadhana, it's a practice. But that we do 24-7. Like try to live in the stream of, of, of emotions that to always connect who am I? I'm a Dwasi of Srimadhi Radhika. And uh, what are they doing now? Where are they now? How can I serve now? Or even if any situation comes, to see any situation in my life, not to be separated from my development under Guru Dev's guidance and Srimadhi Radhika's guidance. Not to separate it anymore, you know, my life, my human existence, and the spiritual uh, goal. It's not separated anymore. It's like it is together. Wonderful. Oh, you are wonderful, Diabetes. I'm so happy that you are giving me your mercy here, <laughs> connecting with the deep questions from the forest of love. Are you in the forest of love? <laughs> Every forest is forest of love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that is the point, and that it depends on our consciousness, right? Uh, right. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he he sees some sand on the on the sea, and it was Gordon for him. Yeah. 
can. This is the difference between the feelings and the knowledge. We, by hook, by crook, I try to, you know, connect with someone like Shiguru who has this treasure of frame in their heart, in their eyes, in their lotus feet, everywhere. And uh, of course, not only Shiguru, all, all the disciples, all the brothers and sisters, they are also treasure houses in their own way. And uh, it's not only someone who is knowledgeable in all the Shastras. And that is nice also. And we love that and we admire that. But love is very simple also often. It's not so complicated. That's, I think, why um, it's important to this Bandha Mui Savadana, this carefulness and differentiation. and But sometimes it takes time. And Gurudev often mentions that those like us who have been practicing bhakti in a different kind of consciousness for so many years, take some time to to get out of this you know these are the lines good if talks about the lines we have one line that's very thick now we make another line of raga nuga or rupa nuga bhakti and we want to make this line more thick in my life that the feelings come and the um, the trust in the feelings and not only into knowledge Any comments from the dear beloved devotees or Gurudev? Are you there with us? I'm very beautiful, very nice. I'm always with you. Very nice, beautiful. Question and answer. Both of them. Thank you. Go on, ask the question. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Guru. You are always with us. It's so, it's so nice when you are hiding and then all of a sudden we can hear you. <laughs> because tired. I was tired. Oh. I joined, but a little late, but it was so good. Honestly. Wow. You know, I wake up at 2.30 or 3, then I need some rest also in the afternoon to break myself, to relax. Yes. But every day is Sunday. <laughs> but no holidays. What to do? I will. <laughs> Listen, I want to listen you more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these songs are so full of mercy. I, I just feel that uh, Narutam Das Taco is blessing us all when we. Um, When we don't lose any taste, I, I mean, the song, it has always been one of my favorite songs, I must say. And uh, it's not that I became tired of it. It's just like you have a jewel and you look at the jewel and maybe, you know, 
you see in one side of it and all of a sudden you see another side sometimes like these govardhan shilas when we bring them to Gurudev, we we cannot see so much but then Gurudev gets out this loop not the and the lamp from the phone and wow then it's so exciting to to see wow there's a footprint and there's Srimati Radhika and that is Mohan and you know it's like very exciting to look at it with a new vision and um, I feel these songs by mercy of Gurudev of, of, of Nitai of Ananda Mandri when the mercy comes to go deep into the feelings like Gurudev, you know, when he sings the songs, he's always with a choked voice. It's always these moments where we feel so completely at home in Rindavan, when we can sing these songs with Gurudev, when we are at the Guru Samadhi, and he is singing them to his Gurudev, so then it's the peak of the emotions. And... Uh, with these emotions, then the heart feels completely uh, nourished and at home. And it's amazing because uh, it's always new. It's always fresh. It's never, never boring. And this for many years. That is so um, astonishing. No? This is the uh, Adbud. It's, it's amazing and astonishing that these songs and the feelings in the heart are never ending and they find new ways to touch the deepest, deepest points where I can feel Shri Guru, the mercy of Shri Matiralika through my Guru. That is um, that is the mercy of these songs about uh, how Shila Naratam Das Thakur is starting his whole Prema Bhakti Chandrika and we know it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and uh, that is already this feeling that it's going deeper and it's being more fresh and more new, it is already like a part of the spiritual world for me, in this world. So as we always desire to feel the fresh and the never-ending love. So in these songs, in these prayers, and with the help of our great Acharyas, we we can always connect to this amazing gift of new feelings, new love, new uh, realizations, and uh, it's like a, you know. And when this happens during the day, when we are doing, we are cooking, we are singing, we are cleaning, and when we connect to these feelings, then um, everything becomes intimacy you know it becomes not like ordinary it becomes not a drag or something that i have to do because it's like my duty no it becomes like a, a like a miracle and once i was reading one uh, quote of uh, a very popular uh, person in Germany. His name is uh, Einstein. Have you heard about him? He is a very smart person. And he had also deep realizations about spirituality, I guess, because he said, you can live life in two ways. You can live life as if everything is a miracle, or you can live life as if nothing is a miracle. <laughs> so I thought he was very smart because, yeah, it's true. If you live life, this life on earth now, as if everything is a miracle, then we are already 
connected to the love of Srimati Radhika because she is giving all new, fresh love to all of us. And if we live life as if nothing is a miracle, then we are just stuck in our own mm, blockages. But sometimes it happens, so we need the help of our friends who can, you know, help with the song like of Shila Narottam Mastako. And these feelings in the heart is that what we take forever and ever into our eternal services to Sri Mati Radhika. She also teaches us songs. She's teaching us. And Guru Manjari is also blessing us to go there and learn the songs and teaching us what is our service there. <laughs> <laughs>